دكتور احمد ذيس اوكي ايش بيرفكت اوكي ماي ماي توك توداي ويل بي اباوت مايكروسكوبيك او اندوسكوبيك لامبر سباين سيرجري كريتيكال ساينتيفيك اناليسيز تو سولف ذا دايليما اند اي ثينك اول اوف اس از سباين سيرجن نو ذيس ايمج سويل ويتش ريبريزنت ذا ديفرنت تايبس اوف لامبر ديسك كولابس different types of disk migration in multiple directions. Modic changes, lumbar canal dimensions, and the facet joint are super C. And I will not go through details about it because all of us know these are the cornerstones in taking the best decision for all our patients, plus respection of biomechanics. Then, After we diagnose our patients as lumbar disc prolapse and give them the best chance of medical treatment and decide to go through surgery, we will think about the approach that we go through to achieve our mission in success. Some will think about conventional open surgery. Others will choose minimal invasive intervention, either microscopic or endoscopic, and also We will not go through much through comparison between conventional open and the minimal invasive intervention. Because it's already more preferable for most of spine surgeons to use minimal invasive than open. Unless they don't have the tool of minimal invasive interventions or much training on it. One of the most re recent reviews mentioned that Cochrane Reboot has found in few improvements in minimal invasive intervention regarding back pain and leg pain improvement compared to open. But when, we, when you go back to Cochrane Review, you will find it published in 2040, which means it needs to be more updated by recent publication, which may change the net result totally. Also, the review have included publications from 1946, which are publications before minimal invasive interventions became more popular and efficient. It makes sense that minimal invasive is more better because logically, if you hit your targets with minimal destruction for the road that you pass through, it's more better. You are not whole who destroy everything to reach a small success with maximum damage to everything in the world. And I think we came to the era to ask ourselves, which minimal invasive intervention is more better? It is microscopic or endoscopic? And as a, a trial to answer this question clearly, we need to back to literature to search for some clues to answer. First, we will not find the first level evidence to support superiority of one on other. And this is obvious in every systematic review and meta-analysis available in, lit in literature so far. Because so far we didn't have a double-blinded controlled study to compare these tools in solid scientific base. In literature, we will find that microscopic spine intervention have been introduced into practice in 1977 by Yashar Gil and Casper, then populated by Williams. On the other hand, Bercutaneous Nucleotomy introduced by Hijikata, 1975. Then campaign developed the Bercutaneous Discutomy in 1986. Then Young started to use arthroscopic technology with irrigation system in a spine intervention in late 90, which is the real start of spine endoscopy. We all agree that microscopic and endoscopic spine interventions has nearly the same advantages and disadvantages. But so far, there, there are no publications that compare the both techniques regarding illumination system more control on bleeding during the surgery, better visual, visualization and the differentiation of tissues, 
better handling of instruments and the long tail outcome. And this is also obvious from the available publication which tried to review literature to find the answer of this question, which is what are the best techniques to find some small difference between both endoscopic and microscopic. So how to solve this dilemma? To do this, we need some justification for what we have reviewed here. Because in every publication, you will find the same note everywhere, which is steep learning curve. And to make a justification to it, we are still in need to answer these questions clearly. Can we compare an intervention has been started in 1970 by other ones started in late 19s? Do we have the same popularity of both interventions? Do we have the same facilities everywhere to use both tools equally? Do we have the same experts equally to give our trainees the same chances? Do we have the same number of training centers which gives the same quality of training of both approaches? Do we have the same numbers of efficient trainers for both? Do we have the same numbers and the quality of publication that we can compare both interventions by fair way? Do we have randomized control tri trials in high efficacy centers to compare both techniques fairly? Unfortunately, we still don't have clear answer to these questions, but we still find in literature that the both approaches are nearly equal in results, although it's still, still unfair comparison. We need more training and equal chances for both approaches, techniques to start a fair comparison. These are uh, papers that helped me in preparation of this lecture. And at the end, I uh, denote this lecture for the soul of my uh, dear friend, Professor Amin Al Kamali. May, uh, may Allah give him the highest gun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sari. And may Dr. Amin Al Kamali rest in peace. And thank you very much for this uh, nice lecture and very important uh, points. Thank you, Dr. Sameh. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.